Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be taking a look at the TS Prof Pioneer system. They sent this one to me about a month or two ago and I like to at least sharpen 15 to 20 blades before I even think about reviewing the product so I can get a good idea of the nuances, if there's anything I don't like, if there's things that I like over another system. We reviewed the TS Prof Cadet Pro on the channel first and I absolutely loved it. Their build quality is next level. And this one right here is their smallest and most affordable unit to date. Now it's still pricey. I think it comes in around the $300 mark. Now with that $300, there's a few things you're not getting that you see here. You don't get this Axi Cube. I don't know how much they charge extra for these. They sent this to me as well. You don't have to have this. There's graduated numbers I'll show y'all in a little bit whenever I do the different angle. We're gonna sharpen up this Kaiser Cobalt 2 and CPM 4V in just a second. And then the system also doesn't come with this base right here. That's how they're able to call it, you know, their smallest system so far. It comes with just this little outline right here and you can buy separately this heavy base. I'm sorry, it's uneven on my little table right here. And I would either recommend getting this heavy plate or bolting it down to a shop desk, piece of plywood. It comes with a C-clamp that you can put it to a desk if you want. And that's this portion right here. You can definitely, I sharpen several knives like that. You can definitely get it done in that manner. I just prefer the base. I have the extra room. Now, if you're tight for room, then some of this is still gonna be kind of difficult because this guide rod's pretty long. So you need the clearance for that anyway. But if you're looking to be able to have something that you can store up a lot smaller, then yeah, go with the clamp, clamp it to a table, a desk or something like that. And then whenever you're done with this, if you need to make it as compact as possible, you take the guide rod out which is very easy. You just remove this stop right here and the little dampener and you can pull this out completely. And you can remove this screw right here and fold this whole unit down. You can take these off, you can fold it all the way down and then you can put the screw back in and then it'll be very, very compact. But like I said, it's not that big of an issue for me. I have a desk to put it on, so that's where this sits. I personally like the base. It's very, very heavy. It sticks to the table pretty easily because it has rubber feet that they give you. Other than that, you know, there's a lot of stuff that is just the same. They got a really nice movement here to rotate this. It's very smooth. All you do is push this thing back and you can turn that freely. It locks into place by itself, and this thing is very tight. It's not going anywhere whenever you sharpen, I promise you that. It also comes with the same diamond plates, the 150 all the way to 1000 grit diamond plates. They work well, and unless you're going to be doing professional sharpening as a side job or a job, then these are going to be just fine. I've sharpened a lot of knives with these stones. They work well. I do have some other aftermarket stones. I, I think I have some Veneve and some Tomas. That's one awesome thing about this system. Because of the way it's set up, you can fit a numerous amount of stones in these jaws, especially as long as they have the little dovetail that fits there. You can move this back. You can move this forward if you're putting a smaller stone. It accepts a lot of different, that's one thing, that's one huge plus about the system that I like a lot. Another thing that I like on this one is, is there's no movement in the stones at all. Once I have it in there, they're not moving around. My Wicked Edge, they rock because it's it's a plastic cylinder in the middle. So the more I'm going up and down, that look terrible. The more I'm going up and down, the more it's kind of expanding that, that hole that the guide rod sits in on the Wicked Edge and it's giving me ever so slight wobble left to right, which that change your angle. I still, being that I've used it for so long, I can still get nice and sharp edges, and I can do it faster on the Wicked Edge because I have the two paddles, and it's, it's just a lot quicker because I've been doing it a lot longer, but if I'm looking for a sharper, better edge, this is where I go every time, no doubt about it. I can get better looking edges. I can get a lot of stuff done better on this system, at least for me. I have problems with my dexterity in my hands. This one has also been nice for me because I can grab this little uh, bulb. They have the little wooden bulb over here 
and it's easy. This is very, very smooth. The action going in and out of this uh, little collar they have up here, which y'all see in just a second. Now we're going to pan to a side view and we're going to start sharpening up this Kaiser Kobold. I do have some damage on this edge from doing some dumb stuff. I hit a few staples and I hit a metal garbage can with this thing. So I don't know if I'm going to get all that out, but hopefully we can get it nice and sharp. All right, first we're going to get started with the 1000 grit just to find, make sure I'm hitting the right angle, showing the dovetail right there and how easy it fits into the stone holder. You just pull, the, pull back the little spring, goes in there very nice and easy, holds it really nice and tight. And I love it. I love that. It's always <laughs> nice. So this little part is, they call it the park it. You can park the, the stone holder. And this is the only thing that different between this one and the Cadet Pro. This one doesn't hold it as securely as the Cadet Pro. Uh, it holds it fine, but uh, I just wish it would be a little bit easier. I'm gonna try it again. I wasn't holding it up high enough. And uh, it's uh, it's because they have like, they have a little washer in there. It's like a Teflon washer to give it, I guess, a snugger fit. And if you don't get it just right, it's kind of loose, but you know, not the end of the world. So this is the little guide rod right here, right here that has the different angle adjust, uh, adjustments on it. And this is your stone thickness compensator. I don't love that either compared to my Cadet Pro. That one has like a little metal, like a, a disc stop. And that's the size you can go. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. But it, it's pretty smooth going up and down. You, you have a pretty wide range. I think you can go up to 26 and down to 12 degrees. Um, now, of course, if your blade is really wide, that could change a little bit from, you know, the, where the stone's touching the actual apex of that edge. But um, if you're worried about that, you could always get the angle cube. You don't have to get that exact angle, angle cube. There's several angle cubes out there that would work just fine. I don't love the O-ring being the stone... Uh, compensator thickness compensator because it's hard to keep it down because it, it wants to just pull back up unless it's making a full rotation but uh, you can get it done not just not the best setup and if you wanted to you could uh, test the angle that the little rod says to an angle cube like I said you don't have to use this one there's plenty of different angle cubes out there that would work just the same but you know if you want a second Check and check yourself. You could do that. I just color the edge with a sharpie and you know make a couple of swipes, and you'll see me do that in a little bit, just to see if I'm getting that entire edge. Make sure I'm, I'm at the right angle. But I'm making some minor adjustments, and we'll fine tune it, and then we'll start sharpening this bad boy up. I've colored the edge bevel with the sharpie, and I'm going to make a light pass with my thousand grit, just so I can see. I'm going to make a few light passes. I want to make sure I'm hitting the entire edge bevel. And if you are hitting the entire edge bevel, then you're at the right angle, If unless you're changing your angle altogether. But definitely do it very lightly. You don't want to gouge into it or anything, especially if, if that's not your right angle. But uh, it looks like I'm all the way, getting all the way to the apex, and we'll move on to our uh, rougher grit stones in just a second. Then we're going to flip it over, do the same on this side, make sure I'm removing the sharpen, uh, the sharpie all the way across the bevel and make sure this side has the same angle. If it doesn't and, and you're good with the angle, then you're going to have to, you know, reprofile that side because sometimes, a lot of times, companies don't give you the same bevels <laughs> on both sides. So it looks like it's removing all that, so we're going to move to the uh, first first stone which I think we're going to start with the 250 because this edge isn't terrible besides the little dings I have in it and like I said just a little while ago we're going to start with 220 this isn't the first time I sharpened this knife so the bevel's already set and uh, if it wasn't I probably would start at the 150 just to set that bevel for the first time but quick and easy to get those plates in there and I just like how simple how solid everything is whenever this thing's locked down it's very very high quality the machining is just impeccable 
So just using very light strokes, and I'm not going to make y'all watch all this. I will speed it up some, and we'll go through the grits. So you're going to want to stay on this on your saint the first stone until you have a burr the entire length. You can see me feeling for it, and also whenever I get closer to the tip side, you'll see me slow down because unless I don't care I don't want to roll over that tip because if you do it's going to blunt the tip we pulled the burr on both sides now we're moving to the 400 grit and we'll speed this up as well from time to time when I'm going through my grit progression you will see me putting the sharpie just a little bit on there just want to make sure I'm still pulling the belt pulling it off completely with one swipe that means my angle didn't change any and that's just an extra check I do. I'm a little OCD when it comes to that kind of stuff. Every grit after your first stone that you formed your bevel with, you're just refining that scratch pattern more and more. So I, I like to use lighter and lighter pressure. And I'm really looking down at that at my apex, making sure that I'm removing all the scratches from the previous grit. And I... Uh, you can see I just swapped stones again and that's all you're doing you're just refining and refining and I'll do this all the way to the till I get to the thousand then we will we will slap a strop on and we will refine it even more this is one plus about this system over my wicked edge and some others or over my wicked edge prominently just because of the way I'm able to look down at the edge I can see my progress with the wicked edge your edge is facing up so I have to turn to the side and flash a flashlight at it just to see if I'm getting everything the way I think I'm getting it this way it's a lot easier and that's one thing I love about this system and I think that's why I'm able to get next level sharpness on this one over my wicked edge I can get sharp edges on the wicked edge just it's not as easy and it, it's not um, always as precise as these edges at least for me at least now I'm gonna move to the strop that's one thing I do wish that TS prof uh, offered with their systems with their stones is a strop uh, you can get aftermarket ones and this one is thicker than my other stones so what you do is is unscrew the little side thing pull it up and uh, let the little the little o-ring sit on top of that then you know you're at your angle now of course if you didn't want to buy a strop for the system you could always if you had a strop already after you took it off of your thousand grit you could do it on a strop I'm using 12 micron gunny juice on leather right here and you got to make sure if you're going to use a strop that you're pulling it away from your edge and here I'm just making sure my edge didn't change any because like I said I don't really love the stone thickness compensator that little o ring but as far as a strop I think that's a necessity if you want to get next level sharpness then you know that that's how i do it i mean it really refines it and I, I, to me it's a must um and you'll see right here going away from that edge you definitely don't want to go into it you will cut into your strop and we'll speed this up and then we'll check out that final edge very light light passes don't want to press too hard you can roll over your edge if you do i do try to make the same passes on both sides not always perfect but i try my best i find it gets your edge bevel even sharper and we'll see after this is done but i have touched the edge it does feel nice and sharp that's not always the best indicator though finally got the knife back together i gotta say that with the ts prof i've gotten some of the sharpest edges i've ever gotten over my wicked edge over my kme over my work sharp precision adjust uh elite or whatever it's called the, the, I can get sharp edges with all those, but the refinement, I don't know if it's a difference in stones or what, but uh, I think it has a lot to do, especially with between my Wicked Edge and this one, that I can actually see my progress because the, the blades lay down like this rather than up like this with the Wicked Edge. So I can see the scratch pattern a lot better. I can make sure I am reaching that apex. And this knife had some damage. I don't know I think I got all the damage out now I wasn't going for a polish this is CPM 4V I could have definitely taken it to a polish but we stopped at 12 micron for the sake of the video 
And I don't I don't really care about a polished edge. I just want a nice sharp edge. And this is foam book paper, thin foam book paper. <laughs> just, there's only any you can barely hear the whenever I'm cutting it. Just listen to this. Yeah. Mm hmm Like ridiculously sharp. Let's see. Straight down. Push cut. Boop. Cleanly push cutting. With the weight of the blade. Let's see, let me show you this. And clean. So yeah, I'm definitely happy with the way this one turned out. And once again, I am happy with the TS Prop system. This is now my second TS Prop. They sent me this one and to say I'm happy with it is an understatement. Now, of course, there are a few things I wish they would add with it. I, I do wish there was some way to store a storage case with them. That would be really, really nice. I wish they came with a strop. That would be nice as well. Definitely better instructions, but there are plenty of videos with people putting these together. If you're mechanically inclined at all, you should be able to easily get this together. I didn't look at the instructions or video. These are in Russian, but they do have good pictures. I wish they would give an English manual though for somebody, you know, their first time uh, getting a TS Prof. Those guys don't read them anyway. They look at the pictures, huh? Like I said, I do recommend getting the base or, like I said, bolting it down to something. The C-clamp works just fine. If you want to do that, it's fine. If you have a bench to clamp it down to. And I don't love the stone thickness compensator. It's just not as easy as the one on my uh, Cadet Pro. But, like I said, you could use an angle cube if you're worried about that. But overall, it's a super solid system. I get the sharpest edges I've ever gotten from any of the systems I own. And yeah, I definitely can recommend it. You know, it's great for kitchen knives, small knives. I don't think you can go above 0.2, I think, the spine thickness. So your quarter inch blades, you're not going to fit in here. But it accepts pretty much all my folding knives besides a, a, a very few that have quarter inch stock. If you are interested in buying one of these systems, I do have an affiliate link. It does give me a small little tiny percentage. Definitely don't feel obligated, but if you're already buying one and you want to help support what I do here on this channel, that is one way to do so. If you have any questions or anything, ask me down in the comments. I'll do my best to get to you. And I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.